will be about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, uh, so, uh, so I, I came in this morning and the first person I saw was Rodney and he's all, um, my voice, I can't sing. So, uh, so it's plan B, so nothing scripted around here. But isn't it great just to not have a script and see what God does? Just to trust him? You know? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, I, I have a, a message today. So, we're stepping out of um, the Sermon on the Mount, which, by the way, has just been tremendous. And uh, we're just going to talk about taking the next step. Because um, as I mentioned before, that as believers, now remember, the first step is what? Faith in Jesus Christ, right? Once you've taken that step, you're in the family of God. Okay, You're in. God provides the way in. God keeps you in. Isn't that wonderful? It's wonderful. So, but having said that, wherever we are in our faith, we need to be evaluating it. Are we moving forward with God? We have to take that first step. Okay, if, we, if we've never been born again, if we've never received Jesus Christ's free gift on the cross, that well, that's where it starts. And you know, I'm so encouraged because I've spoken to Anthony, and he talks about how his dad used to take him to church. His parents would take him to church, and at a young age, they got saved. And see, so there's there's all we always have a job to do. As believers. And, uh, but as believers now, are we taking that next step? And that's my challenge to each of you here. If you feel like you're standing still, well, then allow God to do what's called a sanctifying work. All right? So let's turn in our Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 3. And this is a topical one, so we're not going to stay here. But it's the basis for this uh, message. 1 Peter chapter 3. And it says there in verses 14 through 17. But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. You're blessed. And do not be afraid of the threats nor be troubled. But, what's the word there? Sanctify. See, sanctify is, and we'll see it in a second, is the second tense of salvation. It's once you're a child of God, God wants to sanctify you. And we'll see that in more detail shortly. But sanctify the Lord God where? In your hearts. In your hearts. See, that's where it starts. See, out of the heart, Heart proceeds the issues of life, right? Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience, God wants us to. He's made every provision for believers to have a good conscience. If we have an evil conscience, okay, we need to get back into fellowship with God. It's not like God will reject you. It's just like when I got in arguments with my kids. It's not I disown them. It's I need to restore fellowship with them. I would never reject them. You're no longer my child. God doesn't do that to his children, right? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. See, God cares about your lifestyle. That word conduct is like lifestyle. How you behave. As a Christian, God cares how you behave. For it is better, if it is the will of God, 
to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. We thank God for his word. And all the saints said, Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, that you have a plan and purpose for each life here. Lord, that that is the reason. Lord, you have saved men and women. Lord, not only from the judgment that is to come on the earth, but Lord, that you have a plan and purpose for their lives. Lord, to impact the people around them. So Lord, I just pray, Lord, that we would open our hearts to your word. And Lord, if there's any issue between us and the Savior, Lord, we would just quiet our hearts, get it right, confess it, and Lord, your desire and what you will do if we confess our sins. You are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So Lord, we're going to take this time to make sure we have So, go to the next slide. So, when we're born again, man, and you probably, we did a sermon like this about six months ago. So, this might be familiar, but you know what I find? I have to hear it over and over. When we're born again, there's a conversion experience, right? We pass from death to life, from darkness to light, and it's like, wham! It's like, the lights just went on. What is happening? And all of a sudden, I read the Bible, and it's like the words are becoming real to me. Oh, may we never lose, lose that, that joy that accompanies salvation. Okay? Those, those are a little small, aren't they? That's my fault. But how do we take God's free gift of salvation and then grow. Does, does God want us, if we're born again Christians, to continue sucking our thumb? No. He wants us to develop properly. That's why when you're born again, you go from the obstetrician to the pediatrician. He wants you to develop properly. He doesn't want you to stay as a baby. Okay? That's God's intention for you. He wants the best for you. Okay, so after we're born again, then it's like, okay, well, what do we do now? Well, just to be clear on the three tenses of salvation, now I got you this time. You're used to that green and yellow one, right? We turned it into black and white. I don't know if you can see it. But see, when you're born again, you're justified. You receive Christ, he justifies you. He declares you righteous based upon your faith in Jesus Christ. And praise the Lord for that. How long did it, did it take? The moment you believe. Okay? And he saves you from the penalty of sin. But then you just don't want to stay in that column. I'm a born-again believer, praise the Lord, that's great. Now I'm going to go live my life my own way. No, there's a second tense. And that is the middle column. It's the present tense. It's how you live your life. And so, as you trust him, you are being saved. Did you get that? That's the present tense of salvation. You are being saved. And you have power over sin in your life. So you don't have to sin where before you did. You, you, you were just... You were no different than anybody else in the world who did not receive that free gift. Okay? Doesn't make us better. We just received the free gift grace of God. Okay? So what's the purpose of sanctification? It's to grow your faith. It's to influence those around you. It's to tap into God's resources. You can only tap into Father's resources if you're a child of God. Right? And what is Father's resources? Well, Father's resources is church. This is where the church doesn't save you. The gospel saves you. 
The church is what helps equip you to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? And then those who be justified, okay, those who place, he will also glorify you. Okay, that's, that's in the past tense, by, by the way. That's Romans 8, verse 30, if you need to see it. Those who need justify, he will also glorify. That's the third tense. That's future. That's when sin won't even be in our body because we will only be a spiritual being when either the church is raptured, taken up, or I get in a car accident driving home and I die. Then I go in the presence of the Lord. I'm glorified. It's all of grace, all three tenses. It's grace that justifies you. It's grace that sanctifies you. And praise God, it's grace that glorifies you. So does that mean we just sit around and do nothing? No. So go to the next slide. Go to the next slide. So what's the next step? Well, what did we just see? We saw Antony say, you know what? I want to publicly declare my faith. I want to openly say I'm a Christian. Because many times, you, see, you do see it. You, you see people who, for lack of a better word, they don't want to come out. They don't want to show their faith. Okay, So we get baptized. It doesn't do anything for us. All it does is solidify the believer's decision he already made. Right? So we're baptized into the body of Christ, but then God places us in a fellowship locally. And see, sadly today, sadly today, people aren't even aware of what their where their fellowship is. Okay? You see a lot of I go here, I go there, I go everywhere. Okay? God wants when He when he saves you, he saves you into the universal church, but he places you locally in the body of Christ. And I apologize. The, the slides are my fault if you can't see it. So I'm just kind of going along with them. I can see them here. So what's the next step after that? Well, when you commit to a fellowship, a Bible-believing fellowship, what should that church be doing? The church should be, it's Acts 2.42, it says they once the church is born and a person is born again, they get placed in a local fellowship, they continue steadfastly, what? In the word of God, prayer, fellowship, that's what we're going to be doing tonight, we're going to have a family meal here, okay? fellowship around Christ, and then also what? We examine our faith. We do the Lord's Supper. Because we want to first self-examine us to see, you know what? Is my life aligned with what God wants, what he reveals to us in his word? Okay? So that's the biblical model. So hopefully, you're being equipped. Part of the reason where John's going to be teaching a course how to study the Bible. You know? So he's going to take what he's learning in the seminary and bring it so that when I do study, it's just not, what is this? Yeah. There's a method to studying the Bible. And that starts next Saturday at 10 o'clock, right, John? Yep. The following week, there's going to be a seminar where we're going to learn how to grow in that exchanged life. I give Jesus my life, he gives me his. That's the exchange. And that's how you know you're walking with God. Lord, I'm just laying down my life, and Lord, you give me yours. Okay? Then once you do that, you build on the chief cornerstone. And those are the discipleship classes that we, we go through. And right here, I have the certificates for everybody who went through all these classes. Now, it's designed to be one-on-one, -on -one, so if you say, I didn't get a chance to do that, we're working on it. We'll get to you. If you want to go through the classes, we'll make sure you 
get to the classes. And what are those classes? It's the new life in Christ. That's the first one. Do you know whether you're born again? The Bible makes it clear. Anyone who has Christ has eternal life. Anyone who does not have Christ does not have eternal life. Okay? So that's the first class, new life in Christ. The second class is a new life in victory. What good is it if you have a new life, but you're leading a defeated life? See, Christ has won the victory. He's paid the, he's paid the price for all of your sins. Past, present, future. So you've got to walk in that reality. Jesus Christ has won the battle. Now, the next class is I want to live a new life in power. How do I live a life in power in that victorious life? Well, you got to live by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And how do, you, how do you do that? Well, it's not just, well, the Spirit of God told me, and it contradicts the Word of God. If the Spirit of God tells you something that contradicts the Word of God, don't do it. Okay? The last class is the new life in balance. Okay? God wants you to have a balanced life, not only with God, but with his people. God wants you to have a balanced life. He wants you to know God, and he doesn't want you to run away from people. Okay? He wants you to go out to people. That's why we take this. That's why we learn what we have in Christ. We want to share it. We don't want to hog it for ourselves and go in a castle and just hide out. That's what monks used to do. And it was just, a, you know, they just lived to themselves. And no, God wants us to be equipped here so that we then go out and share the good news. This free gift is not something for us to not share. And part of the class is also being ready to tell your story. Tell me a little bit about your life. What was it like before you met Christ? When you met Christ, what changed? So that you're able to share your testimony. Okay. We're getting through this pretty quick. And once, once you're built up in the faith, you know what? You know what happens? You see servants being formed. You see servants being formed. People that just want to serve the Lord. They're tired of going the way of the world. It just wears you out. And afterward, you just, you have a sense of, what a waste. But then, when we see what God's done in our life, we want to serve others. Is it not true? We want to go out to others. Look at Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Has it been 20 minutes yet? Mark chapter 10. It says there 42 through 45. <clears throat> so this is where the disciples say, Lord, I want to rule with you. What a, what a, am I, where am I going to be in the kingdom? I think it was James and John. And you know what Lord's response was? He says, verse 42, but Jesus called them to himself. He said, get over here. He said to them, you know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones exercise great authority over them. See, see leaders in this world, they lord it over them. I'm, in, I'm the boss. I'm in charge here. Verse 43, yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great, you want to be great in the kingdom of heaven? Desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first, there you go, here's your, here's your job description, shall be your servant. Verse 44, and whoever of you desires to be first shall be called greatest of all. 
You want to know if you're growing in your walk with God? You want to serve. You want to be slave of all. Ooh, that hurts. Doesn't that hurt the flesh? Well, that, that means I can't do this. That means I can't do right? Just let the Lord work in your heart. He wants you to be slave of all. Okay? What do servants do? They desire to see the master exalted. They don't want to see themselves. They want to see the master exalted. They don't seek recognition. They just want to serve. And guess what? God greatly regards them in the kingdom. He greatly regards them. Totally opposite of this life. Totally opposite. Okay. Next, next one. Now we get to the pictures. Well, this is where we just get to check out pictures. Okay. Those are the English classes. Okay. We, we go out and, and serve people by ministering to them, um, by helping them get acclimated to the states so that language isn't a barrier. You know, and you, and yet if you use the God, see, it's serving the Lord through language and being able to share the gospel, the good news. Okay, we go out, we share bread. There's a bread ministry. Okay, every Wednesday night, people go and pick up bread. Did you know Panera uh, gives us, donates bread? And I mean, these bags of bread. If you have questions, talk to Jody and Gary, I mean, and John and Sonny and all everybody else's big bags of bread. So if you know people in, in need of bread, praise the Lord. He is the bread of life. Yes, sir. Okay? And then they go and distribute it. So then you might say, well, bread's not mine. I can't do Wednesday nights. Well, okay, well, there's another opportunity. Look at look at the youth. Here's John in. Now, Rosalia is not pictured, though. I think Sonny's in there, too. See, they're, they're going out to the youth. So it doesn't matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter what your circumstance. God has something for you to do, to be a blessing to others. We become so self-preoccupied. We become so self-motivated. And God has a much higher calling. What's the next picture? Is there, oh, the youth. The little kids. Okay. There's, there's a bunch of them. And there, there are more. And so I know Lindsay is putting together a group to help out. How can we minister to the young children and to teach them the word of God? And it allows the parents to be able to to also then hear the word of God without children up to the age of about seven or eight. Okay? So more to come on that. What's next? Is that it? That's it. Oh, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. God is able. Let's take the next step in our walk. Okay? Where are your priorities? Are you hungering and thirsty after the kingdom of God? Do you hunger for it? Are you thirsting for it? Okay? If you do hunger and thirst, guess what? God's going to meet your every need. Need. He's going to meet your every need. So Lord bless you. Um, so I'd like to take this time and just acknowledge the people that have gone through the class. Probably half of them aren't here. So this shouldn't take long. All right? So, and if we could get someone to get a picture of all the people that have done it, and what it is is those classes that we talked about before. John, if you could make your way up here. Once everybody's up here, it's, we'll do a group. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so just if I call your name, come on up. And uh, 
we'll just have a little group here and take a picture of those. What it is is taking that discipleship course. It's building that foundation. Okay, the first one is Faye Andrea Massanaro. Did I get that? <laughs> Jordan Rose.
so it's a little different time today, isn't it? Praise God. And so if you're interested in taking the class, we're, we're here. You know, John and I and Rosie were here 9 to 4. But here's the other thing about this is real discipleship. See, those people that were just up here, the best way to learn is to teach someone. Because, and I know this from personal experience, when you have to share, man, you better put some time into it. You better put some time into it because you want to give something. And see, Jesus gave his best. He gave his all for you. And my question is, what will you now do for him? Do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love him? Peter, be my sheep. So God bless you guys. We're going to close in prayer. And I think you, know, we're just going to close in prayer today, right? Oh, you got another song. See, this is what happens. We don't have to <laughs> It's all on me too, I promise. So Lord, just thank you. Thank you for this time. Lord, of refreshing. Lord, may we see where we are in Christ. You've given us everything that pertains to life and godliness in your Son. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, we saw this baptism. Lord, we saw what it represented. We see the changes taking place. So, Lord, I pray we would press in and press on, Lord, with you, knowing you are faithful. You that began a good work will perfect it unto the day of Jesus Christ. We love you. We bless you. Thank <laughs> you.